Link Micro asked me if I would like to review their LM249MS digital microscope. I agreed on the condition that I could write anything I thought necessary. This microscope is actually made by Shenzhen and Onstar Technology, which produces many more variants. It is the larger and, with a price tag of approximately 350 euros, also considerably more expensive brother of the well-known Andonstar AD407, which can be purchased for approximately 200 euros. In this review let's see if that extra 150 euros is money well spent. The microscope was sent excellently packaged and equipped with all kinds of extras. In addition to the housing and base, three lenses are included, at which we will take a closer look in a moment. A USB and an HDMI cable are also included. And of course, the still somewhat messy chaotic cable with four ends for the power supply to the various components. Because one of the lenses enables the high magnification required for transmission microscopy, a very simple light box and five biological preparates, a sample box and a pair of useless plastic tweezers are included. Even a bag of spare bolts and a 32 GB SD card are in the box. A very concise manual and the same annoyingly slow remote control as with the AD407 complement the extensive equipment. The LM249MS, with its 10-inch screen and 12-inch high stand, is a lot larger than the AD407. The microscope can be placed considerably higher above the work surface, and an extendable boom ensures that there is more space at the back, so that, for example, also larger printed circuit boards can be inspected. And that, in my opinion, is the biggest advantage that this microscope has to offer. There is much more space for unhindered work. Whether it's SMD soldering or examining the quality of coins or stamps, it's all much easier than with the small base of the AD407, which barely had room for your hands and tools. The base is now equipped with a rack and pinion, so that focusing at higher magnifications is now a bit smoother. The rough vertical adjustment is still as primitive as before with a rod through a hole and a clamping screw. When replacing the lenses, they must be secured with two screws. A bit primitive and it can be annoying if you have to do it often. The screen produces a beautifully crisp image without distortion or color aberrations. In this respect, there is little difference with the Andonstar AD407, which also gave such a beautiful image. But it also makes sense, 
because this microscope contains the same Novatec 96660 camera. A very extensive set of resolutions for video and photo is available. The maximum video resolution is 5600 by 4200 pixels and there is even a 120 frames per second option. The usefulness of this can be questioned in this configuration, but it betrays the origin of the Novatec camera that you often see in sports cameras and dash cams. The photo resolution ranges from the ancient VGA 640 by 480 pixels all the way up to a 24 megapixel 5600 by 4200 image. There is a problem here. As far as I could determine, the image sensor in the camera is only 4 megapixels. So every shot with a higher resolution than these 4 megapixels is interpolated, and the image is artificially boosted. The camera reports a digital zoom of three times, but that is incorrect. From a 65mm image at minimum, to 32.5mm at maximum, is exactly two times instead of three. When replacing the lenses, they must be secured with two screws. A bit primitive and it can be annoying if you have to do it often. It is striking that the same, now very short goose neck LED lights, and the now really too small base plate have been used. The two spring clamps on the bottom are really too far back, not that they were that useful on the earlier models, but it does look untidy. The fact that the base plate is now really too small is noticeable when you pull out the boom. The center of the image now lies over the front edge of the base plate, another minor drawback. And in the only place where the spring clips could be useful, and that's on the simple light box, the supplied screws do not fit. The microscope comes with three different lenses. The maximum distance stated on the A and L lens cannot be achieved. The stand is too short for that.
The Andon Star is equipped with an aluminum zoom lens, which works well and has very little backlash. With this microscope, considerable savings have been made on the material, and everything is made of plastic with much greater tolerances. The removable ultraviolet filter that protected the lenses against soldering fumes is missing from the Link Micro. Although focusing at higher magnifications is much better than with the Andonstar 407 with its rattling arm and clumsy adjustment, it is certainly not optimal. For comparison, here the same action with the Andonstar in the base and arm I built. See previous videos for more information about this. Despite the cheap construction of the lenses, they perform quite well. The images are at least as good, if not better, than that of the Andonstar with the extra lenses I tinkered together myself. This shot is of a pine stem. I think it's very beautiful. It is one of the five beautiful slides that come with the microscope. A lot of nonsense is written about the maximum magnification of a microscope, mainly by the advertising department. Anyone who has worked with these instruments knows that for high magnifications you need oil immersion objectives. I won't go into it in depth here, but the many transitions from the glass of the lenses, to the air between the object and the lens, from the air back to the glass of the slide ensure that more than say 400 times magnification without these special oil immersion lenses make no sense. Of course you can show the image from the microscope on a large screen using the supplied HDMI cable, but there is absolutely no display of more details. Here are the magnification values as I measured them from the 10-inch screen. Let's take a closer look at the Link Micro's display. The surface area is more than twice that of the Andon Star, but because the pixels are larger, the increase in pixel count is limited to 56%. As previously noted, the camera is exactly the same as in the Andon Star, and has a 4 megapixel chip, so here too the 0.9 megapixel screen can zoom in twice without loss of detail. Here I am looking at the zoom lens. No lenses are moved, but the CCD chip itself moves up and down, supported by an excess of helicoid grease to clog the play. And there appears to be a piece of glass glued into the plastic cover that I think serves as a UV filter. Software for the Link Micro, Windows only, can be downloaded via a link in the manual. Installing the software was certainly not without problems. Among other things, a 14-year-old Windows edition had to be downloaded. After some fiddling, I was able to contact the camera to my computer via the supplied USB cable and I was able to take some measurements. The software looks unfinished, lacks a help function and Chinese characters still pop up everywhere. An undocumented feature is the ability to connect via Wi-Fi. That would be very welcome to me, but on my computer the connection was always refused after checking by Windows. In summary, this Link Micro LM249MS is particularly suitable for working with not too high magnifications. Then the stability is sufficient. Fortunately, there is enough space under the lens to work comfortably, the most important advantage. It is less suitable for the highest magnifications, because this column and arm are not sufficiently sturdy and precise for this, but with some patience the finicky settings are manageable. It is nice that a larger screen is built in, but the advantages of this should not be overestimated. The build quality could be better and is generally lower than that of the Link Micro LM407 Pro. The software is substandard, but the image quality is really excellent. For those interested, I will put the relevant links to the product in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please consider a subscription.